Kings fans chime in on the Fiala Faber trade and more on this Friday feedback edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we are on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years of the Fox Sports Radio Network, also co-host of the Puck Podcast a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 18 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. The summer FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. It is a Friday fan feedback show. Uh, No news to report involving the LA Kings. So, We get right to your emails. And we start with Scott in Simi Valley, who is a regular emailer. He says, yes, it stung when the Kings traded Brock Faber. I was a big fan, but as you stated, Faber wanted to stay in Minnesota and to get a dynamic player like Fiala, you have to give a lot up. This Blake trade is at least a break-even deal, even better than, than for the Kings, considering Faber's circumstances and the Kings' strength at right D at the time. But Rob Blake's asset management as Kings GM is a misnomer. It has been nothing short of mismanagement. I don't need to list all the examples. We've been through them. Kings ownership should turn his hot seat into an ejector seat and jettison Blake far, far away so everyone can hopefully forget about his miserable tenure as GM and remember him fondly as a Kings great player. And while they're at it, send Luke and Mark Bergevin packing as well. As a player, they called Robitaille lucky, Even now, he's lucky to be employed by the Kings. The fact that Blake is still GM is kind of scary, actually. It makes me wonder if Kings ownership has any awareness of what's going on with their team. If not, ownership is just as incompetent. Oh, well, Blake's job performance is depressing enough. I can't afford to stress about ownership as well, although they seem oblivious to how their resources are being frittered away. In my humble opinion, even if the Kings surpass expectations next season, Blake's departure is essential for the club's future and long overdue. That is from Scott in Simi Valley. Um, yeah, I mean, I will say it is an odd position to be in as a Kings fan because obviously we want the team to do well. We want to see them succeed. And yet if the team does somehow uh, surpass expectations this coming season, makes the playoffs and wins a first round playoff series, does that mean Rob Blake gets a contract extension? Um, probably. I mean, and is that really what we want? Because as Scott pointed out, um, it's not just about next season. It's it's about the long-term future. Is, is Rob Blake the guy to turn this over to for even longer? I believe it's eight years on the job for him. No playoff wins. Um, four playoff appearances, over four. Um, look, it's not all been terrible. It's not like he's an incompetent boob. He isn't, but he's made some really big blunders and blunders that are big enough that they've damaged the, the, the franchise, not permanently, but certainly in the short term. And they've been big enough that when you couple it with the lack of playoff success, that's usually a, a recipe for getting a new GM. So, you know, you talk about Kings ownership, um, you know, I think as long as the Kings make the playoffs that they're willing to trust uh, the people that they've put in a position of power to run the team. Once the team misses the playoffs and they don't get that revenue, that's when it really gets their attention. So, uh, again, that's also in a weird situation. Do we want the Kings to miss the playoffs so they can make changes? Uh I guess, but it's hard. I can't, I'm not one of those fans that can root against my team in any circumstances. Even if I think that somehow it might be better for them in the long run. I just, I'm just not one of those guys. I've never rooted for my team to lose so we can get a better draft pick. I've never 
wanted them to lose so there could be change. I just, I just can't bring myself to doing that. Now, if it happens, then it happens. But it's it again, it's a weird position to be in as far as a Kings fan. Uh, Andy in Guelph up in Canada says, great thoughts on the Farber for Fiala deal. Uh, Kings needed offense, and no one could actually predict how good Faber was going to be. Also, Minnesota gave Faber a lot of term and a high average annual value for one productive season. Great contract for Spence, and I'm also excited to see how utilize, how he's us, utilized with Clark. Uh, I'm all for holding Blake accountable, but for actual mistakes. His flaws have been contract signings, both in term and average annual value, not necessarily trades. Even the Dubois trade wasn't that bad. It was the contract that hurt. Many get hung up on Velarde, but what has he really done when he actually can play a few healthy seasons? I'll shift my perspective. Had LA kept Velarde, we likely would have also given an awful contract to someone who never plays full-time. Happy August, and that is from Andy up in Guelph. Um, You're right. Um, Rob Blake's two areas that he's been really deficient in um, have been not signing any real free agents of note. Most of his his uh, most of the good work he's done with the Kings have has been through trades, um, and he's been good and bad with the contracts. Like the Quentin Byfield contract, I think you got to give him credit for that. I thought that was a good deal for both sides. So uh, I would say his lack of being able to get free agents, and whether that's all on him or not, you know, I mean, people have to come have to want to come to play here, um, but he hasn't done much uh in signing free agents and getting real quality additions through free agency he's done pretty good with trades um giving out the contracts though to cal peterson and as uh, was mentioned by andy to uh, pierre luc dubois those were ill-advised so it's been a mixed bag but like i said there's there's been some big enough blunders and then the lack of the playoff success it all comes together to feel like change needs to be made. And there was the comment uh, earlier from Scott about Luke Robitaille. I think we do need to remember Luke is not, and I know we focus on it and we should. Luke's also in charge of the business operations for the Kings. He's the president of the team and it's not completely when you judge his tenure about the on ice products. Certainly that is definitely a part of it, but it's also, you know, season ticket uh, sales, attendance, um, community relations, all those other kind of things. He's, he's a part of being in charge of that too. And the Kings seemingly, seemingly have done a pretty good job in the business side of things. So you do have to give him some credit for that. Uh, this comes from Scott in Buena Park. He says, I have a question about Faber's contract and the responsibility of, or excuse me, the possibility of Clark's next contract. Let's assume Clark does Faber type metrics this year. Clark would have one year left on his entry-level contract, just like Faber, when he signed a long-term deal. Would you favor a long-term contract or a two-year deal as Clark's next contract? My answer, short-term two-year deal to remain flexible in cap situations. Faber's new contract bugs me a lot. Looking Faber or locking Faber up for eight years prevents him from becoming an RFA in his next contract and gives all the power to the player. Good GM should exploit young players who are RFAs to allow their teams more flexibility with the salary cap. Look at Byfield or Spences. I see no value in all or in not utilizing all your players restricted free agent time with his team. The math at the end of the contract will make it worth it, but does it really extreme case Faber would get a $4 million per year uh, for two year deal way above average for a second contract. His next contract would be around 11 million per year for eight years. This would put him in the top three in the league. The total for the first eight years would be $5 million more. Uh, good stuff there from Scott in Buena Park. Um, I'm, look, I'm not a general manager. I'll never be one. But I, generally speaking, agree with what you're talking about. Um, I think good general managers have to utilize all the tools in their toolbox. And if that means giving a young player a shorter-term deal, so that you can keep him under contract a couple more years longer than you would otherwise and pay him at a more reasonable rate. That makes a lot of sense. I would, as a GM, I would have a couple of rules. Number one, I would never give out no trade clauses or no movement clauses, and I would never give out an eight-year deal unless I'm totally convinced that that player is going to be a pillar of my franchise for a decade. Like an Andre Kopitar, a Drew Doughty, a guy whose number is going to be hanging in the rafters when it's all said and done. Is Brock Faber that kind of guy? 
I don't know, maybe, but probably not. And I get you want to lock up a, a guy long term who you think is going to be, you know, I, I maybe look, maybe Minnesota feels that that's Brock Faber. They feel like this is the guy we're going to build our build our decor around for the next eight years. Um, and, and look, I could be wrong. I think he's a very good second pairing defenseman on a good team. I think he's a top pairing defenseman on a mediocre team. And is, you know, again, is that the guy you want to lock up for eight years? For to me, no. Um, as far as Brant Clark goes, I mean, we have to wait and see. I think he has much more of an upside than Brock Faber. I think ultimately he'll be a better player than him, a more dynamic player than him, a, a player that you do want to invest in long term. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what he does this year. Um, I would suspect um that he'll have a decent year. I don't think he's gonna have a huge year. I hope he does. Um but I still, I'm, I'm of the opinion of I need to see more than one year before I'm going to invest long term in you. And I know you, some people could say that maybe about Quentin Byfield, but we've seen Quentin Byfield more than just the one year. He, now he had the one standout year, um, but we kind of think I think we have a good idea, a good grasp on on Q. And he didn't get the eight year deal; he got a five year deal. So uh, I certainly would be be uh, more along the lines of what you're talking about, Scott. I, if, as a GM. You have to blow me away. You have to be a no doubt, like Hall of not, not Hockey Hall of Fame, but maybe like Team Hall of Fame type of guy before I give you and before I make that major investment in you. Uh, we are going to talk about Kings hockey jerseys and more next on Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your parts guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay's guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Our next email comes from Don L. And he is in North Hollywood Beach, California. I thought maybe he was in Florida. But he did uh, confirm that he is, in fact, in California. So I I had searched earlier for it, and I didn't find anything. But I did go to Google Maps and put in North Hollywood Beach. And I think, Don, let me know. Are you up by Port uh, Port Naimi, is it? Up there in Ventura County? I think that's where you're at. Uh, anyway, uh, from Don L. He says, observations on Alex Turcott. One big thing will determine Turcott's ultimate contribution to the Kings and probably his entire future, and that is health. Out of 82-game NHL season, if Turcotte could just average 75 games per season over the next five years or so, we'll have a very good player on our hands, somewhat in the mold of Alex Iafalo, Trevor Moore, and at least as good as those two. But a variety of injuries, several horrendous cheap shots have plagued him for years and years. He is an explosive skater with outstanding puck pursuit when defending. His forechecking can be extremely good, and he's, he's natural on the PK. His scoring seems to be mostly from within a few feet of the net. He doesn't shoot very well from more than 10 feet out or so, and usually closer. He does have a quick stick within very close. His playmaking is pretty clever. He can make nice quick passes at top speed. I've actually seen him make a great pass in the middle of a spin move. I like him as the fourth line center or wing to start, but if he stays healthy and his game grows, he could be t- tried at left wing on a line, say, with Kopi and Kempe. I feel his best offensive potential is on wing. At center, his smaller size, about 190 pounds at most, might hold him back offensively and would be increased dis- defensive responsibilities uh, by playing center. Turcotte is always compared unfavorably with Trevor Zegers. They're good friends. Zegers has elite hands, which Turcotte admittedly does not have. I see Zegers as an immature Fiala. In one or two years, Zegers may be as good as Fiala, but he's not there yet. Alex Turcotte has defensive instincts that Zegers does not have as a more complete player, albeit not as purely gifted offensively. With health, in my opinion, Turcotte could, as a wing, reach at least 40 to 50 points and be great defensively and on the PK and add speed and versatility in the lineup. He could play center or off wing in a pinch and take faceoffs. It's possible Alex Turcotte could turn out to be a good draft pick after all, 
but only if his body and his luck permit him. And that again was from Don L talking about Alex Turcott. We're going to find out um, certainly one way or another. Uh, as you said, Don, it's, it's about staying healthy and I hope for his sake, it happens. Um, you know, if you, if you stay healthy, if you get your shot and it doesn't work out, at least you could say, well, I got my shot. The worst thing would be to be continuously getting hurt and never be able to know in your mind what could have been. So last year was hopefully um, a uh, an optimistic season for Alex Turcott, you know, getting to play pretty much the full season. Um, yeah, he's had his issues, but again, hopefully turned a corner this past season and just be great for him to just get his shot and, and really see what he can do. And as you say, hopefully turn into – um, at least a, a a very solid NHL player. And uh, I mean, the Kings invested a lot in him with that first round pick. Um, but again, hopefully he stays healthy. It looks like he's going to get a shot this year. And he's one of the things I, I am very excited to see uh, how it turns out. Uh, our next email comes from Danny. He's in parts unknown, did not uh, include where he's at. So Danny, if you do email again, let us know where you're at. He says, in my humble opinion, you have become the Wolfman Jack of the pro hockey scene. The Wolfman was hip with the young sound and even got involved with social issues of local teens. And you seem to be doing the same with our LA Kings. Uh, you're a beacon of hockey knowledge and quite the analyst hockey needs. Uh, when I started following the Los Angeles Blades, I'm going to be 68 in September. Uh, he says, you know, Dean Lombardi built a pretty good team, but Rogi Vashon did not do too badly either. I have mixed emotions over Rob Blake's era, and I will not go into too much detail about it right now. Just wanted to let you know I enjoy the show, Eddie. I'm a big fan of yours, and you will always be my Wolfman Jack of the hockey world. Well, Danny, uh, thank you uh, for the compliment. I can honestly say I never thought I would be compared to Wolfman Jack, and for anyone who doesn't know who that is, and I barely do, frankly, but I remember uh, he was a radio DJ of some note. He had a real raspy voice and talked like this, and that's how he got. He, has, he called himself Wolfman Jack, and he was up all night. And he would howl, howl at the moon. I do work overnight, so maybe maybe Danny is coming from that standpoint. I don't know. But uh, okay. All right. Um, I'll take any compliment I can get. But uh, I did not see that one coming. But thank you. Uh, Brandon in Newport, Newport Beach says, I watch the YouTube channel and I'm an everydayer. Thanks for doing the shows in the offseason too. I have noticed you almost always wear a different Kings hockey jersey when you do the show. How many do you have? Do you have a favorite? Will you be getting a new one? Are most of them authentic or replica? I have five Kings jerseys, Kopitar, uh, Brown, uh, Dowdy, Quick, and my latest one is Kempe, thinking about Fiala or Byfield next. Um, yeah, I, I think I've talked about this before. I think maybe we've had this question before. Um, I, I don't know exactly how many jerseys I have. I would guesstimate that I have about 20. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, the one I'm wearing right now is the old purple and gold, mostly the gold uh, home jersey back in the uh, forum days. Uh, this is a replica jersey. I did actually just buy an authentic Marcel Dion jersey. There's a, there's a story behind that. Um, a friend of mine uh, says that he can get it autographed by Marcel Dion for me. So I think I have around 20. Most of them are authentic, and most of them do have a player name and jersey on them. Uh, I've got a bunch of Kopitars, Dowdy. Um, I do have one Robitaille. I have one Blake. Um, I actually don't have a Gretzky, which I'm a little embarrassed to say. I have an Adam Deadmarsh jersey. That was kind of an impulse buy. Um, let's see, who else? Uh, several Dustin Browns. My wife was a big Jonathan Quick fan. She's got several Quick jerseys, uh, but she's only got, only got like two or three. So I have a pretty good collection. I really like hockey jerseys. Most of them actually have been autographed. I do have Robitaille and Blake and Brown and Kopitar and Dowdy all autographed jerseys. I'd love to do something with them. I don't know if I should put them in a display case. We really don't have, I mean, that's a lot of jerseys to put up in frames and put them around the house. But um, yeah, I love my hockey jerseys. Uh, big fan of them. Will I get one of the new ones? Probably so. I'm a sucker for that. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. So what's my favorite one? That's a tough one. Um, I think my favorite one actually is a Dustin Brown. Uh, stadium series jersey from 2012. I just that's it's a good looking jersey. It's got the crown in the front. It is the the silver and black. 
Um, I am a, I do prefer the purple and gold as far as just the color, but I don't know. I think that was probably my my favorite one. Uh, we got uh, a talk about a Kings road trip and a comment on the Kings goaltending for next season. That's next. You're on Locked On the Kings your team every day. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop, but FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open up the app and dream up any bets that I want to make, whether it's on Major League Baseball, golf, soccer, NASCAR. Never too early to get some bets down on your favorite NFL teams for the upcoming season. I know what you're thinking. Hey, sports betting is not yet legal in California. Hopefully that changes in the near future, but you can still sign up at FanDuel, browse the latest betting odds of your favorite sport teams on the Sportsbook app, and get in on the action from anywhere with their free games featuring real cash prizes. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a booster or bonus daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Our next email comes from Allison. She is in Henderson, Nevada, formerly Rancho Palos Verdes, which is not far from where I live. Uh, and she says, my husband and I are really excited for the season as we are going to start the year with our Kings first road trip. It starts with the season opener in Buffalo on October 10th. We then go to Boston, Ottawa, Toronto, and Montreal, five games in seven days. Then we head back home, not going to Anaheim, but we will be back in Vegas to see the Kings wrap up their road trip against the Golden Knights. We have never done a Kings road trip, but it's been a dream of my husband's. I am nervous about the travel and hope we don't have any issues, but it is exciting any advice from you or anyone else out there that has maybe done something similar? Uh, well, Allison, safe travels. I hope you have a great time. That sounds absolutely amazing. I've done some Kings road games, but I have never done anything like that. Uh, that's a bucket list thing for me to do. I know some people who have done some baseball road trips like that. Um, but I think one of those East coast trips in, in hockey where, you know, uh, maybe like New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, those where there's all, you know, they're in such a short distance from each other would be awesome. Um, going to Toronto and Montreal is certainly a bucket list thing for me. Um, I, yeah, I'd love to do something like that. Uh, I have not been to Boston either. I've not actually, I've not been to any of those places that you're going. So except for Vegas. Uh, so that sounds absolutely awesome. Um, so I can't give you any advice on as far as, uh, you know, how to handle it. I don't if anyone out there is watching or listening to this and they have some advice for Allison for a future show, send off an email and, and we'll let her know. But uh, I hope you see a lot of wins. Uh, and uh, that does sound like an absolute blast. I would love to do that. Something like that someday. Uh, our next email, our final email comes from the closer Edwin in Brea. And he said, Oh, you know what? I'm going to forget. So let me say this. I'm sorry, Edwin. Uh, Allison in Nevada did remind me tomorrow. I don't know if, when you're watching this, but coming up on Saturday, uh, I will be in Las Vegas for a meet and greet for the radio show I work on for Fox Sports Radio. And there's no reason why if you're a Locked on LA Kings fan and you want to stop by and say hi, if you're in Vegas or in, in Nevada and want to stop by that you can't show up. Uh, it's going to be, and I retweeted this on social media, uh, it is at the Stakeout Bar and Grill in Las Vegas. Apparently, it's very close to the UNLV campus. Uh, and starting at 3 p.m., uh, I'll be out there. So, again, if we have any Vegas uh, listeners, Allison, if you hear this and you want to stop by and say hi, I uh, would love to say hi to any Locked on LA Kings fans in the Vegas area. Again, it is the Stakeout Bar and Grill, 3 p.m. on Saturday, the 3rd of August. So now to Edwin's email. Uh, Edwin and Brea says, first off, happy birthday to your wife. She's a wonderful lady. Yes, Edwin is a big Chargers fan like my wife. They know each other through that. And uh, yes, my wife's birthday was Monday. You may have noticed we didn't have an episode on Monday. I took the day off to uh, celebrate my wife's birthday, took her to Universal Studios. Uh, she's a huge Harry Potter fan. She had not been to Universal Studios Hollywood for the Hogwarts and all that stuff. So she had a great time. And so I decided, you know what? I'm taking a day off. She's sacrificed a lot of time so that I can do this show. And uh, so she is deserving it. So thank you, Edwin, for, for wishing my wife a happy, happy birthday. Uh, back to Edwin. He says, to me, the Kings goalie situation is an upgrade. Kemper is a proven winner with a cup and a world championship, despite not being a top elite goalie and Riddich is a solid backup. I see our tandem as a one, a one B situation. If Kemper plays 52 games, while Riddich plays about 30, that should be fine for um, play management. To me, the key is if the Kings defense also allows about 25 shots or less 
then the Kings should be fine. However, if our defense gives up more than 25 shots a game, we're likely in trouble. Our goalies play well when the defense plays their part. The top four defense is set with Dowdy, Anderson, Gavrikov, and Spence. Uh, the final two is the question since uh, we lack a right stick D-man. As of now, the Kings are a bubble team, sadly. If they addressed what they needed, like an elite right-handed shot scorer or a point producer, then I would have had been a bit higher. Uh, I will say I am interested with Jim Hiller and what he has to offer for this season. So Edwin believes that Jordan Spence should be on that second pairing with Gavrikov, and he is confident, and I know Edwin plays a little netminder out there. Uh, he likes Darcy Kemper. Look, I'm optimistic. I'm hopeful. Um, I think he'll be okay, but, you know, I know he's won a cup and you talked about him winning a world championship and that's great, but the last two years have not been good. So hopefully he can bounce back and do a cam Talbot and get on a better team and turn things around. Uh, fingers crossed that Darcy Kemper can get the job done. Hey, thank you to everyone who took the time to send an email. Really appreciate it. This show is literally not possible without you. If you guys want to send an email again for next week, or if you want, if you're a new emailer, you want to chime in on something, uh, remember the email address locked on Eddie at gmail.com e-d-d-i-e uh also for you everydayers those of you that listen and watch locked on Olympics every day we are switching formats for the next month so going from five days a week to three days a week starting next monday we're just doing monday wednesday friday obviously this is a very slow period uh for the kings and this is a chance that uh, the network gives us to kind of recharge our batteries a little bit and not get too burned out doing a show every day is very difficult so for the next month we're just doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Wednesday, we'll try to continue to have the interview show. Friday, we'll continue to be the fan feedback show. And then Monday will be kind of our big feature show. But if there is any news that happens on Tuesday or Thursday, Arthur Kaliev gets traded, we will do a show that day if, as the news dictates. Otherwise, though, again, starting on Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for the next month. And then in September, when things start ramping up, when rookie camps get ready, training camps get ready, we're back to five days a week again. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. I would love for you to stay interactive with the show on social media, X, Twitter, Instagram. We are at Locked On LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you as always for listening and watching this episode of Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday. And as always, go Kings, go.